our technology is unique in the, in the sense that it uses a floating gate technology. And that gives you a, a data-centric design for high reliability and a good user experience. So let me drill down into a little bit more in terms of what I mean by data-centric design for reliability. So this is a classic cross-section of a 3D NAND string. And I want to bring your attention to three different points. The first one is uh, the physics of controlling electrons, that is act of programming and erasing, is very well known. So this is tunnel oxide base, and, and that's very well known. The second point is uh, the discrete cell isolation. Uh, as you can see, our storage node, the one in blue, is separated from the other layers, and that minimizes any risk of cell interference. And the third one is a number of electrons. We have six X more electrons in a vertical cell than what we had in uh, 2D NAND. So when we put all of these things together, uh, we have an understood physics, we have isolation, and we have lots of electrons, and that's what gives us this strong charge loss protection for very high reliability, which is what everybody wants in a data center. There are a few other technologies out there, and so I'm gonna to try to compare and contrast the strengths and weaknesses of each. And on the right is the technology that some of our other colleagues are using, uh, charge trap flash, charge trap 3D NAND. The key difference, as you can see, is they have a continuous charge storage node. It's not discrete, it's continuous. This continuous charge uh, storage node does lead to spread out of the charge between adjacent cells. So what it results in is, uh, hey, we have a poor charge isolation between the cells, and that, the logical conclusion of that is that it's poor data retention. In addition to that, the program erase windows are also pretty compressed, and for that they have to do other innovations like come up with better uh, tunnel oxides, better uh, vertical stacks, as well as have metal gates using a replacement gate flow. So there are ways around it, but you have to do more work to get the same job done. We have chosen to have a conductive poly. What that results in is, uh, if you look at it from the top view, which is the top graph, our pillars, our memory holes, are extremely symmetric, and uh, they don't have any overhead in them. So the top graph shows hexagonal packing, and it's very uniform. The cross-section confirms the same thing, that hey, you, re you really haven't wasted any space. At the bottom, uh, what other charge flash technologies have to do is you have to make breaks so that you can actually put the replacement gate material in. So I've tried to normalize the scales on those two things, and you can see that there is a break in the memory holes, and as a result, there is an overhead for the replacement gate, and that results in something close to 8 to 10% overhead uh, for a cell size. That's significant. Moving from aerial density, I'm going to change uh, conversation into electrical experience that uh, this density, uh, this technology actually gives you. So I'm going to spend a little time on talking about what this uh, bits per cell challenge really is. So what I have are a few different uh, technologies, like one bit per cell, two bit per cell, three bit per cell, and four bit per cell. If you think of what happens in flash, you're trying to program, and then you're trying to read. Once you program, you have to keep the electrons where they are, otherwise you won't be able to read them after retention. So through retention, you want to be able to keep the electrons as much as uh, possible in the right place. So that is true across the board, but what is different is the space between these two levels, the separation between a one and a zero. You can see that it's decreasing from one bit per cell to two bit per cell, and you can just imagine what's going to happen to three bit per cell and four bit per cell after that that space is getting really small. And any small amount of leakage, dispersion, loss of electrons is going to create read inaccuracies. That will mean our data is lost. We don't want that. So I have two plots. One is a floating gate technology, and the other one is a charge trap flash. And you can see that when you go from the blue line, which is the Intel uh, floating gate NAND, you are losing charge, but you're losing charge at a very slow rate. So for the goal that we usually march to 5 years 30C, you haven't really lost too much of this metric called read window. Compare and contrast the charge loss because of its lateral dispersion. And uh, this is, again, well known in papers and literature everywhere. Now I have my own data to prove it, that you are actually losing charge at a very accelerated rate. And what that means is a uh, floating gate NAND cell is superior to the charge tap flash for data retention. And that that will result in is a better QLC uh, for data-centric usage. 
So we talked about four bit per cell. Why is it easy for floating, easier to, for floating it to do as compared to uh, uh, other technologies? Imagine the same problem when I double the number of levels. After four comes five. So we have uh, started thinking about doing five bit per cell. And again, not a product announcement, not a technology announcement, but we have a demonstration of how our Gen 3 cell really performs. And we expect it to be even more superior when we go to Gen 4. So takeaway message here is that the march towards increased density is very much alive. And we are doing really well with that through our uh, choices of the architecture. It results in better bits per wafer more bits per SSD, and more bits per rack through all the innovations that we do all the way from technology to SSDs.